Along with a brand new calendar year, it's a new season of conference play in the American opening night in Tulsa as the Golden Hurricane welcome to town the Shockers of Wichita State. First of two meetings this year on the conference schedule and we have it live tonight here on the American Digital Network. For the first time in 2019, we welcome you in here on the ADN. Lincoln Rose along with Coach Angela back with you. Thrilled to have you along with us. We have a great schedule coming up for the next couple of months in conference play. But coach, we talked about Happy New Year, but also for these coaches, it has to be like a clean slate now with conference play finally here. These two teams look equal on paper, but Wichita State's only had one road contest. They have eight freshmen. They're the fifth youngest team in the country, and they're going to have to be ready to handle the bigs of Tulsa. Yeah, you mentioned those eight true freshmen, nine total. They had eight seniors that they graduated this past offseason in Keitha Adams' first year. How does Coach Adams and these Shockers come away with a win tonight? Well, they're going to have to secure the basketball because they've been turning it over too much. Be aggressive early and continue to fire up the three. Across the way for Matilda Mossman, of course, Tulsa. How do they find a way to win their home opener in conference play? Well, defensively, they're going to have to cover the arc. They're going to have to be mentally tougher than they've been. They've lost some single-digit games and then have a balanced scoring attack. Well, if you're Keith Adams, you probably made your players wear name tags for the first month of the season with all the fresh faces. I know you have your eye on a particular freshman in Jada Hampton. Well, she was Miss Mich Michigan. She finds her rhythm now. She's smooth. She's natural, she has a good basketball IQ, and uh, she put up 16 points in her last win, so they, they're relying on her heavily. For Coach Mossman in Tulsa across the way, of course, Alexis Galden had been waiting in the wings behind point guard Wakefield, who graduated this offseason, but now it's Alexis's turn to run the ship. Well, you said it. she's waited her time, and it's her time is now. She has over 100 threes. She has 4.3 assists on the year, and she's really making it happen for them. Her Golden Hurricane at home to open conference play, welcoming the Shockers to town. It's Tulsa and Wichita State getting us started with tip when we come back here on ADN. part of Tulsa and that we're not stuck on campus. I'm in all sorts of organizations and I've studied abroad twice. At TU, I'm involved in whatever I want to be. I've learned that it's okay to change paths because my life is an amazing book and I'm still writing it chapter by chapter. And that's my story so far. inside the Reynolds Center where both Tulsa and Wichita State wrapped up non-conference play with victories for the holiday season. Lincoln Rose, Angela Beck back with you in a moment. We'll have a chance to check in with Bruce Howard, but first let's take a look at our starting lineups for both squads. For the Golden Hurricane, now six and seven on the year. Wichita State and the Shockers are seven and six. And uh, Angela, when we look at Wichita State, Sabrina Lozana Cabbage, one of the few familiar names we'll see, of course, after so many players lost last year, but she'll be in that starting spot. Yeah, she was big for them last year towards the end of the season. She is their leading three point uh, scorer in uh, American Athletic Conference play, so they're going to lean on her. Bremont, Prince, Hampton, and Bastin all wrap up the starting five for Keitha Adams in her second year with the Shockers across the way for Tulsa. Galden, Biddle, Lasky, Lewis, and Polk. Well, again, Lincoln Rose, Angela Beck with you. And for the first time today, let's check in with the third member of our broadcast crew courtside with Bruce Howard. Bruce? Well, Lincoln, uh, no question about it. All the metrics would tell you that this should be a close game. All the numbers kind of are very even between these two teams. In fact, last year, of course, they split, each team winning on the other team's floor. 
For Keitha Adams, the Wichita State head coach, she's concerned about the Tulsa physical nature, especially inside, wants her team to be aggressive, and of course, road composure. How will this young team react on the road? And for Matilda Mossman of the Golden Hurricane, she's worried about Wichita State's changing defenses. How will they adapt offensively? And then stopping those straight line drives by Wichita State getting to the basket. And of course, we want to engage with you on social media. React by going to the comments section on Facebook and tell us where you are, where are you watching this game. We want to know, and we're going to have all of the interesting answers a little bit later on. So no question about it. We want to engage with you on social media as Tulsa gets ready for Wichita State. Bruce, thank you very much. Great to have everybody tuned in tonight here on the American Digital Network. Our first conference matchup here on ADN, this women's basketball campaign. A lot of storylines to get through as the next couple of months unfold. Uh, right now, Tulsa in white with the basketball looking for the opening advantage as they'll work it inside and the early shot is blocked. As Wichita State's Lazana Cabbage, we spoke about her able to get her hand on that ball and a shot clock violation. Nice job defensively to get the campaign underway. Good defense and also good offensive execution. Just, you know, moving the ball, trying to get a little rhythm, a little motion game by uh, Tulsa. So again, Keitha Adams in her second year. This was a coach who last year inherited eight seniors who fortunately all bought in. They were able to find their stride near the end of the campaign. Boy, was that a crazy conference tournament, though, once it got underway. Uh, Tulsa last year would knock off Houston in the first round before falling to Cincinnati. Wichita State fell to Temple in the opening round one year ago. Both these teams, though, they know it's going to be a grind in conference play in games like this one are ones you don't want to let slip away. Exactly. That was a good action there by Wichita. One of the things that Keith Adams wants him to do is rebound and be physical. And that was a good offensive board and a second opportunity for them on this end. Seraphine Baston, one of your freshman starters this year, native of Belgium. And she will split the free throws, making her 14th consecutive start. Now all 14 starts of her young career. Well, 15 footer straight away just will not go down for Crystal Polk. Polk, one of the few seniors we'll see here tonight for either team. Polk has been a, she's been a little machine inside for them. She's done a lot of great things. Seven rebounds this year for her, and she scored double digits 10 times this year. Her coach, Matilda Mossman, really bragged about how she is constantly grinding to try to get open. Teammates always looking for her. Open look for three, won't go down this time for Jada Hampton. And Jada, among the many freshmen we'll get to for the Shockers. One-on-one, -on -one, nifty spin, and ultimately, finally, the first two points belong to Hampton. Well, that's that direct line shot to the basket that they were talking about in the pregame. She went directly down the straight line and, and had the roll. Hampton's been finding her rhythm, opts it in. Nice defensive effort for the stomp from Baston. And a late dish, Lizana Cabbage, though, unable to get it to her teammate, the turnover. Kick out to Biddle. Feet inside, and we've got a defensive foul. They will count the bucket or free throw coming up for Desiree Lewis. Lewis, a freshman out of the San Antonio area, went to Judson High School just north of town. He's only missed one start so far this year as a freshman. Yeah, I liked how she attacked her body, went straight to the hole, and uh, had a good finish there for a freshman. That's a nice, strong move. A little extended pressure by Tulsa here early in the game. Again, just like last year, each team meeting here in the conference opener, and they will meet one another in the conference conclusion. Uh, Mid-range shot, that one will not go down for Seraphine Baston. 
And it's Tulsa the other one. Yeah, Tulsa mixing it up early. She said, hey, if you know, Wichita, Wichita can do it, I can do it too. So little zone action early in the game. Open hurricane around the perimeter. And finally access to the big slide. And determination pays off for Alexis Galden. We mentioned how the junior out of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, patiently waited her time behind Wakefield these past several years. Former state champion Galden at Broken Arrow High. And a 17-footer won't go down as Tulsa at the moment with a two-point edge for head coach Matilda Mossman. You see her across the way in her eighth year at the helm of the Golden Hurricane. This is her third Division I stop, of course, the former head coach at Arkansas and K-State. She's been resilient. You just can't take her down. She just, you know, keeps on ticking. Also had a brief coaching stint at the high school level in Oklahoma. Certainly got to know the coaches now that she gives calls to for recruiting. Feed inside, able to utilize the size and a nice finish from Crystal Polk. The 6-2 senior, the easy target down low. The thing I noticed about her right off the bat is that she's in better shape than she's ever been in. And last year she could, you know, had to t get a lot of blows. She wasn't in great shape and it, how she handled that in transition was very impressive. Really was focused this off season and it has already shown in non-conference play now here tonight. And able to get the tie up. Desiree was going to send us the other way. As reaching in was Desiree Lewis to get a piece of that basketball. As if you want to sum up Lewis, the word effort comes to mind. Constantly giving you everything she has, and that time fighting for any ball that's close. Yeah, that's impressive for her as a freshman to be able to dig that out of the post and not get not get a foul. Sometimes you try try to get overly aggressive in those situations. Though it's a turnover essentially for Wichita State. They haven't scored in close to three minutes now. As Tulsa right now up by four. Quick stop and pop as the three-pointer off the mark from Biddle. But an offensive rebound, second chance opportunity. Hulk. Oh, great job between those two. As Polk and Alexis Galden again. Now in their third year as teammates. That's a little one-two combination. They run a little pick and roll there. But I'm impressed with Golden's command of the offense right now. She seems to have a great tempo and a rhythm about her. You can tell right now Wichita State's had, you know, really trying to get the pieces of the puzzle together. That's a good high-low, but they don't have quite the rhythm that, that Golden's got with uh, Tulsa. Well, Shania Smith caught that ball where you would like to, but the freshman is then tied up on the up-down. And let's check back in with Bruce while we have the chance. And obviously, we continue to want to engage folks on social media, and if you respond, of course, respond in the comments section of Facebook. But here's our poll question. There are a total of six international players on tonight's rosters in the two teams, and eight different teams in the American Athletic Conference have international players on their rosters. So the question is, which American team has the most international players on its roster? So which American Athletic Conference team has the most players on its roster and I can tell you right now the countries represented right here in this building today would be a uh, Poland France Belgium Switzerland and Iceland so that gives you a little bit of an idea yeah. so we're at a break and we'll be back with more from the Reynolds Center here in Tulsa as Tulsa taking on Wichita State here in the American Athletic Conference Bruce thank you right now a six-point lead for Tulsa here in their home opener in the American This is our game, our moment, our time. We work hard and play harder. We stay loyal to the game and to our team. We are power, American power. The American, powered by determination.
Welcome back. You just heard Bruce ask you, and you have your four choices there to vote for. Wichita State, USF, Houston, and UCF. Which team has the most international players? We have seen a lot of great ones, Angela, and I know one that's been your favorite over the years is a young woman who's back this year and trolling at SMU. Yeah, she's having a heck of a year, and she's leading the conference in rebounding right now, so it'll be fun to watch her back. She's got a great spirit about her. Obviously, SMU is not your answer with the Australian, as that's not one of your four options there. Uh, great to have you with us again here on the American Digital Network. Easy enough to share and let your friends know that your right, favorite teams are underway. Right now, Tulsa hosting Wichita State. As Bruce noted at the top of the broadcast, these two teams split their two meetings last year. The visiting team won well, one thing, two meetings last year. One thing uh, Coach Adams was wanting to have, have to happen is to hit some shots early. And they're one for six for 17% right now. They're not hitting the open shots that they have. Tulsa right now shooting 44%, just a little bit better and getting some quality shots. There's another little bunny that they should normally make. So they're just probably not settled down very much yet. This is a, a lot of pressure for them on the road here and uh, it's testing them early. We were tied 3-3. Since then, it is a four minute drought for Wichita State, a little 6-0 run for Tulsa at the moment as Tulsa leads 9-3 here with a little over four minutes to go. Yeah, I don't think it's anything particular. I just think it's, you know, lack of concentration. There's a little turnover. They do average 19 turnovers a game, which is about, you know, five or six turnovers too many. But with a young team, that's what you're going to get. Nobody standing still for Tulsa. Great motion here. As Lascai to Biddle, back to Lascai. Shot clock counting down. Polk will get the final look at it with a second to spare off the side of the room. That would have been an impressive move if that thing goes down. A little left hand roll by the big girl. An active hand from Polk. Deny the pass from Lozana Cabbage. So Tulsa right now in a defensive struggle, it's their defense that is helping them maintain a six-point lead. That's a good quick transition for them. They get the steal, push it up the court, and, and get a quality. Here's Golden, you know, she passes ahead, and Maddie just misses the shot, but great, great transition there. That first free throw good for Maddie Biddle, the freshman out of Bixby, Oklahoma, Bixby Spartans. Already a couple of double-doubles this year in her first season of college basketball. Anytime you can be a freshman and come into the uh, American Athletic Conference and start, that's, a, that's, that's saying something. It's, it's not an easy conference to, to play in and be able to have that opportunity to play four years. You can make a lot of things happen. It's an 11-0 run for Tulsa after Wichita State. We'll do the math for you. Put up the first three points of this one. Straight away, looking to double that tally they do. Well, that's Hampton right there, digging him out of the grave right there and, and getting a, a quality three-point shot. Good ball movement on that side. Hampton connecting on 37% of her three-pointers this year. Quality look that time. Polk had three shockers collapse on her. Now she heads back to the free-throw line. That's a, just a great touch by her for the big girl, just being able to handle that. And she she just uh, quickly put that up. So very impressive start for her. Already six points, looking for two more here, Crystal Cole. Just a high low. She doesn't bring it down. She's a lefty, but she kept it up there and, and finished strong. Crystal, a 79% free throw shooter. There's that left hand on display off the mark. Wichita State's had four turnovers in the last five and a half minutes. That has helped slow down their scoring. Last three points belong to this young lady. A little 5 0 run now for Jada Hampton. That's a little touch shot by her, just a little six footer touch shot, and she has a good follow through, and she's very smooth in her delivery. So after Tulsa had scored. 13 straight. You saw a 5 0 run right here for Wichita State. Second 
not a lot of substitutions here early, which is encouraging that, you know, they're, they're getting in good shape here. Two minutes to go here in the opening quarter in Tulsa. One of these two teams will start the conference slate on top of the standings at 1-0. Here's a Wichita State team last year, just 9-7 and seven in year number one for Keitha Adams after she made the move from UTEP after leading the Miners to a couple of NCAA tournaments and a pair of WNIT berths as well. Along with her, she brought over Ava Laskowska, her longtime assistant coach who also played for her back when they were in Independence uh, Community College. Yeah, coach doesn't mind Coach Adams, in, you know, if they're, if they're inconsistent sometimes, but she wants him to play hard and she wants him to be competitive on everything. So she won't stand for you not to do that. That's kind of her, you know, where, where, you know, where, where she'll, she'll take you out of a game if you don't really put it out there. She realized it was both a blessing and a curse to have those eight seniors in year number one. She could have a lot of players who knew college basketball, what would be required, and they were willing to buy into her appearance in Wichita State, taking that program over, but it also meant a lot of recruiting to be done. I give her a lot of credit, though. A lot of coaches wouldn't come in there and, and lean on those seniors like she did. Hulk. Well, leaning on 33 here in the opening quarter of this one. She's got eight points now. Well, they haven't been able to solve the high-low game that Tulsa's brought to them this early. They're going to have to put more pressure on the guards so the guards don't have the full look inside. And give it to Polk. She's got great hands tonight. And a long two off the mark from Alicia Finn. And an offense rebound, second chance opportunity here for Hampton and company. Final minute of the opening quarter here at the Reynolds Center. Nice look from the corner and good on the money again for Jada Hampton. Jada Hampton was three for three from three point range in their last game and, and she's uh, two for two tonight. Jada Hampton has 10 of Wichita State's 11. And she is keeping them in this one early on within four now. So Wichita hasn't been able to, to stop the high-low game, so they go to this 2-3 zone to try to take away Polk inside. And now a second chance points perhaps coming up at the free throw line for Tulsa. With a little over two seconds to go. Good offensive rebound by Tulsa. Both teams have been very effective on the boards and on, on the offensive glass. Lewis this year now 13 of 22 on the charity strike. As again, only missed one start this year as your power forward, the freshman. As we noted from the San Antonio area. She'll miss the back end, but an offensive rebound. And how about that punctuation for the opening quarter? Kendrian Elliott, the Wichita native against her hometown squad. The offensive rebound and put back. And we have ourselves a ball game. One quarter complete here in Tulsa. At least three more quarters to go. A classic brewing here on ADN. More than 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 22 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American, powered by determination. for a fourth straight year. Quasho from 30. Unbelievable. And be able to celebrate this type of championship. There's the record breaker. They are the champions of the American. Well, it should have probably just been a four-point lead going into the second quarter, but 
the offensive rebound and put back, followed by the miss free or following the missed free throw. Kendrick Elliott right on the spot, able to come through. By the way, Bruce Howard a little bit earlier had talked about the international flavor in the American asking you. Uh, which of the four schools in your multiple choice uh, have the most international players on their roster? Your choices were these Shockers, USF, Houston, and UCF. Well, it is the Bulls of USF. Eight international players. Wichita State does have five. We'll talk about several of them throughout the evening. And, and meanwhile, there's only one international player for Tulsa. And of course, you know there's a pipeline from Iceland to Tulsa, Oklahoma, isn't there? Definitely. I guess the story, though, so far this game is um, 10 rebounds and five of them on the offensive end for Tulsa. And, and everyone kind of thought that, the, you know, it would be Wichita controlling more boards because that's what they focus on. But Tulsa's kind of brought their A game on the rebounds. That was the family of Elaine Parapkill's daughter, uh, the freshman for Tulsa. They mentioned she arrived in Tulsa in June. And, of course, you know, June and July, about as hot as it gets anywhere. And so that was quite the adjustment for her. Uh, she's starting to feel right at home, the electric engineering major. She's a year older than most of the other freshmen for Tulsa. Uh, but great to see her family on hand. Able to be with her over the holidays. And a little deja vu. Just the way the first quarter ended is how we start the second with Elliott. Mentioned she is from Wichita, out of Wichita South High School, the junior. Yeah, Elliott played a, a little, you know, more, I mean, more aggressive role last year for them. And I'm sure she's not settling coming off the bench and not being the go-to player. So look for her to, to really come in and, and spark them. The answer for the Shockers comes from Alicia Fay. Fay out of France, one of the five international players for Keitha Adams. Now we are talking about Elliott. She's former all-freshman team in the American. You mentioned about how she contributed last year, but she's really there to help Polk maximize her minutes, coming in to spell her as the big. And she and Polk now have combined again for a significant chunk of change, including these four points off the bench from Elliott. Yeah, she, you know, Coach rarely plays both bigs together. It'd be interesting to see if she does, but... Um, usually there's one and then they give each other a little bit of a blow, so. Polk on the bench right now with her eight points. But I, I think the entire Tulsa team looks like they're in a lot better shape than they were last year. And I think the new freshmen that they have come in have really given them uh, a little ignition in their engine. And you see the walk. Yeah, a little unforced turnover there for them and They'll start, you know, limiting those as they get a little more experience. Late to pick her up, but the shot off the mark from Galden. And there's more second chance points this time from Desiree Lewis, the 5'10 freshman. I think the look on Keitha Adams' face, Coach Adams was uh, a little bit disgusted on that. She just cannot stand her team giving up these offensive rebounds and, and then scoring off them. So look for her to have a little talk with them at halftime. Both teams with six second chance points. Most of Tulsa's, it seems like, have come through the past few possessions and the over the back call will be whistled. Well, great block out by Tulsa. They totally had, there was four white jerseys around the basketball and only one Wichita State player in sight. So they're commanding the boards at this point. 21-13 right now, Tulsa with the basketball up by eight. Let's check back in with Bruce. Hey guys, uh, you know, at the beginning of the game, we talked about Keitha Adams being very concerned with Tulsa's physical nature inside, and she's not happy with the way her inside players have reacted because Tulsa scored 13 of the first 17 points with the bigs, and then another couple of baskets here early in the second quarter. She was not pleased and said, hey, we got to get a little bit tougher. She was admonishing her team to play tougher inside and also be tougher with the ball. Too many turnovers in the first quarter as far as Wichita State was concerned. So a little bit of work for Wichita State, but obviously they're still hanging in there. Bruce, 18 points in the paint for Tulsa here early on. Well, that's the game plan, and they're executing it flawlessly so far. Um, 
look for Keith Adams to try to mix it up just a little bit more. They're going to have to do more to pressure those guards so they don't get to see and, and have the rhythm that they have in the passes right now. The only points that technically aren't in the paint for Tulsa have been free throws. They have not hit an outside shot. They have not needed to. Double-digit deficit for the Shockers. And ultimately, no second-chance opportunity as Tulsa comes down with the rebound to Lewis. Yeah, so far, Wichita State has lacked an interior game. They just haven't really gotten anything high-low or anything down-low until then, and they're not, they're not finishing. Missing their cribs. There you see the numbers. And a hand may have deflected it. That's Shia Smith who is defending the shot, but Tulsa continues just to want it more. Another follow-up effort. Assist to Galdwin. That was a great little flip pass from Galdwin, and, and that she's a big key to their rhythm right now. Lewis now has seven points. Back on the defensive end. And a nice angle Asia off the glass, Asia trying to get something going, perhaps Asia Henderson. We talk about all the freshmen Wichita State has. She's a redshirt freshman, making her ninth appearance now. And the Shockers, if they can go with points off the turnover. Will stop and pop. Nice pull up, measured perfectly by Hampton. Jada Hampton's been extremely impressive. She's really uh, lived up to all the hype that's been around her, and uh, she's got a really nice looking jumper. Hampton's been shooting close to 40% from the floor this year. Already 12 points now to lead the way. Have a look at Jada Hampton again out of Lansing, Michigan, from the backyard of Michigan State. Angela, as you mentioned, former Miss Basketball in the state of Michigan. It's a nice land for them. Wichita State already with a couple of signees during this first period out of the state of Texas for next year. Yeah, we haven't really seen much of Cabbage here early on. She, she really needs to do more for them. They did try to go into her there, but she also likes that three-point shot. So it looks like they're trying to attack the low, down low a little bit more and try to get some easy buckets inside. And a couple of fouls now on this trip down by Tulsa. Tulsa's lead at the moment, eight, as we are midway through the second quarter. The hurricane will bring Tyja Scales, Houston native out of Kincaid, now the senior. Zada Cabbage, you noted back in the ball game, that off the mark. Yeah, she never really squared up on that shot. She needs to turn and get squared up and uh, use that body that she's got. And just cannot link up as the pass from the sky off the mark. Yeah, nobody was home on that pass. Just a little bit anxious there. So Wichita State shooting about 36% here on the road. Also 47% on their home floor. Shockers have not been able to overcome that 13-0 run. And Tulsa again, when they see a basketball, they believe it belongs to them. Well, they switched it up. They went to a man-to-man -man that time, and it kind of caught them off guard. Long two off the mark, still fighting for another offensive rebound. Open look straight away, can't drain the three, and finally the Shockers getting the ball back. They got a little extra pep in their step for sure. And another turnover as Rebecca Lascai just wanted it more. Biddle. Good transition bucket, good double down. They're doubling down the post. The post just, they're holding it too long and then they're getting it up the court quickly. So their transition game looks pretty sharp. Biddle's one of these freshmen that Matilda Mossman says are helping push all the veterans on the team to continue to 
fight and practice and continue to improve. Everybody battling for their jobs. Right now, Golden Hurricane with a 10-point lead, and it gives us a chance to check back in with Bruce Allen. Well, we talked earlier about the international nature of this game. For Tulsa from Iceland, Eileen Rafkelstoter. Uh, she is a young player who has yet to play a whole lot for head coach Matilda Mossman, partially because of the adaptation of, you know, coming across the pond and playing the physical brand of American basketball. However, Eileen's parents and the, her brother came across the pond and, in fact, visited her here uh, during the Christmas break. And, in fact, they are here today uh, at the ball game. And the dad's name is Rothkels. The mom's name is Bjorg. And... Uh, it is Eileen's twin brother, whose name is Aston, who is also here. And they came here during the Christmas holiday. They actually put out an Icelandic smorgasbord right here at the Reynolds Center. And that consisted of smoked lamb, dried cod, kind of like fish jerky. Uh, also a very nice crescent roll with ham and cheese in it. It was delicious, according to Coach Mossman. And then cookies and candies, all coming from Iceland and all provided by the Rothkel Stoder family. And they are here visiting for another few days before they head back to Iceland. But certainly a, a little touch of home for Eileen right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, part of the international flavor of this game. Lincoln? Yeah, Bruce, uh, Coach Mossman boasts just how mature that young freshman is. We've mentioned she is a year older than the other freshman for Tulsa, but a smart young woman. Great to see that her family got to spend this uh, New Year's with her. They were able to recruit her just simply by having film sent their way, and it happened to be a great fit for them as they are looking on, and they see Tulsa right now here in their home conference opener up by 10. Well, Again, Tulsa has their lead with all these points in the paint. 20 of their 27 points have been in the lane. Well, they, they look good down low, but also they have seven assists and 11 points off the seven turnovers that Wichita State has delivered. So they are really moving on all cylinders, shooting the ball well, rebounding the ball well, getting it down low to their bigs. Polk's been big early. And then you've got Elliott off the bench with a left-hand flip. Remember, Biddle hit that mid-range jumper. That's the only field goal from outside the paint. All the other points for Tulsa have come from the free throw line in this one. And I don't want to say they haven't had to work for their scores because they have been fighting for every loose ball and creating some favorable opportunities. But nice job by the Shockers coming out of that timeout with a strike. Now back within single digits. That's a nice quick hit with a little high-low with Smith uh, finishing. Yeah, Shia Smith, freshman in her own right, just a natural athlete as described by her head coach. There you see Keith Adams in front of her bench. Middle for three. Golden Hurricanes still have not connected from downtown and won't come away with any second chance points that time. The rebound to Smith. I was thinking Keith Adams is about ready to check into the game right there. She was almost on the floor. He still has five fouls to work with. <laughs> Up ahead, Tulsa in a hurry, but holding her ground, taking the charge. Easier said than done for the five foot five Ashley Reed. That was a nice charge, right there, right, nice take there on, on Wich Wichita State. She held her ground, got outside the arc, and made it happen. Ashley's from a d completely different Wichita, Wichita Falls, Texas. That's always one of the hottest places on the map when your meteorologist comes on with your late local news. So again, a chance for the Shockers maybe to put together a run here in the final three minutes of the first half. Zona Cabbage. At the first step, able to finish. That's the first clean look I think she's had all game. She took it, secured it, squared to the basket, and finished it. And she was a lot more methodical than she's been, so they need to do that more often. The senior shooting 500 from the floor this year. Biddle on the baseline. Biddle now from the near side. Over two on that trip down. The rebound finally to Jada Peacock. I'd say Biddle's got the green light. 
You can just fire it up whenever. There we go, back inside the cabbage. That's what they've got to do. High, low, quick hit inside. So they're, they're, they're making it happen from the interior. Lozana Cabbage now with four points, second leading score for Wichita State behind Hampton. It'll not take the shot that time. There's still time. And a long three off the mark and immediately out of her hand. KK Rodriguez knew that one was not going down. Probably an ill-advised shot at this point. Get the ball inside to their bigs. The last few times down, Tulsa has not let their bigs touch it. Shockers are on a 6-0 run, but will not be able to stretch it on that trip down after the walk. This is as close as we have been since that run early in the opening quarter by Tulsa. And it was 7-3 at one point. Well, Wichita State's done what Tulsa did early, which was go high-low and go inside, and Tulsa's kind of gone away from it, so they need to get the ball back inside, let Polk touch it like that, get some inside-out action. Still looking for that first triple. Finally, on the money, it's Alexis Golden hitting almost 30% of her attempts from beyond the arc. Very impressed with her. She is the leader of this team. She makes it happen, and uh, she has just a great confidence about herself. Minute away until halftime. Reminder, stay tuned here on the American Digital Network. We'll have our first chance to look around the league as conference play getting underway. And certainly there was a memorable game last night with some national implications. And right now here in Tulsa, Golden Hurricane just trying to hang on to what was a double-digit advantage. Getting the ball back here before going in the locker room. Penetration able to drop it down low. As Polk now in double digits leading the way for Tulsa with 10. Well, they tilted the defense. They countered back up top and attacked down low, and that's a perfect way to execute. Big, big offensive possession before the half. And Tulsa, after the Golden Hurricane, able to find the final two points of the first quarter, may have a chance to squeeze in one more score here before the end of the half. Unforced error there. Let's see what happens here. If they can get another quick hit. A little pick and roll action. Three seconds and counting down. Biddle off the side of the iron. A nine point lead for Tulsa. As they welcome the Shockers to town. Wichita State with a win last year here in the Sooner State. The Golden Hurricane trying to look for a rare win in this series. We'll have more on that in the second half. But again, right now, a chance to check in with the top Golden Hurricane as Matilda Mossman joins Bruce. Coach Mossman in the first half, you wanted to dominate inside and you did. Your bigs played awfully well. They really did. Crystal was good early and then when Kendrian went in for it, Kendrian scored. So, um, you know, I, I like the way we're playing. I like the shots that we're getting offensively. And defensively, you know, we're playing pretty tough. We've given up some offensive rebounds. We've given up some tough tough shots. But uh, I like the way we're playing right now. You were concerned about Wichita State changing their defenses a lot, but it seemed like your offense were pretty efficient at finding the gaps. Yeah, they played man early, and then they, they it's a 2-3 zone, but they try to make it look like a 1-3-1. A one, one, and so I, there were the first couple of possessions we struggled, but then after that I thought we got in pretty good flow. And you got a three-pointer late. You finally uh, unlocked the outside game. Huh? Yeah, too bad we couldn't hit that three-pointer at the end of the shot clock, at the end of the uh, second half. All right, good luck the rest of the All game. Right, thank you. Head coach Matilda Mossman, University of Tulsa, as Tulsa leads here at halftime at home against Wichita State. Lincoln? Yeah, Bruce, thank you. That defense with 14 points off turnovers, just enough to give the Golden Hurricane the edge here at the half.
I'm Kate Leahy, and this is my story. I love that TU is part of Tulsa, and that we're not stuck on campus. I'm in all sorts of organizations, and I've studied abroad, twice. At TU, I'm involved in whatever I want to be. I've learned that it's okay to change paths, because my life is an amazing book, and I'm still writing it, chapter by chapter. And that's my story, so far. Halftime here on the American Digital Network as Tulsa trailed early 3-0, but a 13-0 run helped them establish a double-digit advantage. Again, right now with the lead back in the locker room. We welcome you back here on ADN. Lincoln Rose along with Coach Angela Beck. And, well, before we dive more into this one, of course, last night, non-conference wrapping up in style. We had a couple of heavyweights colliding. UConn went to Waco to take on the Baylor Bears. And uh, while UConn has set back their first regular season loss in Stanford back in 2014, a little over four years ago, I have a feeling Gino and company not too bothered by simply the aspect of the lock. You, loss. You'd rather pick up that loss now than in the NCAA tournament. Yes, uh, exactly. He, he isn't happy that they lost. He's happy how they lost. The fact that their offense wasn't good. I mean, their offense wasn't like he, a Gino team. So uh, obviously Mulkey had her kids ready, and it was, it's a tough environment to play at Baylor. So obviously UConn is still going to be a team to watch in the national picture, but there's a reason why they keep scheduling these te teams with some national implications. Speaking of some headliners here in the American, I know there's a lot to look forward to. Our player of the week out of Tulane. You talk about the youth movement there. The sophomore, Crystal Freeman, 17 points, 10 rebounds last week against Central Michigan is your American player of the week. She bounced back the next day as well to help lead Tulane to another win. She winds up being your MVP of the Miami Holiday Classic. And for Tulane, uh, this could be a special group for Lisa Stockton. Well, they're 10 and three. They've won three in a row. And Coach Stockton just got her 500th win. So what a way to go. And of course, your freshman of the week uh, up there in Philadelphia for Temple, Alexa Williamson, one of so many freshmen we'll be keeping an eye on in the American this year. She finally got her first start the other night. She winds up with her first career double-double in response in that matchup against LaSalle. And as a result, Temple, uh, again, I think there's a lot of chance for them to surprise some folks, but they've only played three home games this year in that non-conference schedule, but 3-0. and well, they're 3-0 at home, and, and they're on the rise. They, they're starting to really get it going. Even though they had a little tough time early on, I, I think you got to look at the Owls to really uh, be uh, prevalent down the stretch. So we take a look at what the American looks like before anybody registers a win or loss in conference play. Again, UConn, that first loss last night now at 11-1. and We talked about Tulane on a three-game winning streak. Lisa Stockton with her 500th. Congratulations. But remember some of the teams that made some headlines last year. UCF with a great performance has been receiving votes consistently now in the polls. And remember Coach Huey's group in Houston last year, how they were able to surprise some folks early on, really turning some heads. Really the question is, which group out of the bottom half of this league will start to upset some folks once we get underway? Well, they're going to have to win the head-to-head -head matchups. You know, they're going to have to beat these guys that are down in the little bottom of the pack to get to the middle of the pack to have a chance. So, yeah, obviously UConn, UCF are, are tough, but USF, is you can't ever count them out. They put a really tough schedule together. As for our coverage here on the American Digital Network starting next week, we'll have at least two games a week right here on ADN. This is January's coverage alone as we will take in the Texas rivalry as the Cougars meet Again, the Mustangs, Travis Mays, will welcome Coach Huey to town as we'll have that next week on Wednesday. I know you and I, we're going to be hopping on the phones pretty soon talking to those two head coaches. Memphis will go to Wichita State to Coke Arena as we'll see Keith Adams' group uh, seeing if they can uh, build on their matchup here tonight. We'll also see them on the road at Dallas. Then Tulane over at USF in Tampa and then UCF up in Carolina at ECU against the Pirates. That is just simply our January slate coming up. A lot to look forward to here on the American Digital Network. Still more to look forward to here tonight. Another half of basketball still to come in the conference opener for Tulsa and Wichita State. This is our game. Our moment, our time. We work hard and play harder. 
We stay loyal to the game and to our team. We are power. American power. The American powered by determination. In just five seasons, storied programs have united as a Power Six Conference. We've watched record breakers, all Americans, and victories that prove we are not only equal to the best, but often better. Can you imagine what's ahead for this Power Six Conference? We can, because the best way to predict the future is to create the future. The American, powered by determination. More than 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 22 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American, powered by determination. for a fourth straight year. Quasho from 30! Unbelievable! And be able to celebrate the second championship. There's the record breaker. They are the champions of the American. Strong in mind, strong in body, strong in school, sport, life. The grind is 10% physical and 90% mental. The mind is the power. The body is a means to jump higher, run faster, be smarter, and live longer. There is no weakness when it comes to seeking help. We are stronger together. So let's talk about it. A waterfall starts with one drop. Change starts with one person. The American is dedicated to ending the stigma related to mental health. And promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. Promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. Halftime continues here in Tulsa as the Golden Hurricane trying to send the fans home happy 1-0 and in conference play. We take a look back at the opening two quarters. Some of the highlights early on again, those points in the paint, factoring big. Which Wichita just came out and took it down low right off the bat. They all obviously had a good inside game late by Cabbage, and, and that's what they need to do more. They're going to have to go inside, get the ball inside, and attack. Get Cabbage on the board a little bit more. Yeah, Shockers were able to stay in it because of Hampton's 12 points in that first half. She's had the majority of the scoring for Wichita State, but Tulsa success with Polk, and then off the bench with Elliott. Great size advantage in this one, and they have made the most of it. When you look at some of the stats, uh, other than points in the paint, what, what has stood out to you and how this game has played out? Well, Tulsa hasn't hit the ball very well from three-point range, one of 11, but, but, and usually they're very good from three-point, but they don't need to be. They can go inside. I think that the Shockers have to get more people involved. Hampton's great, but they have to get three or four more players involved, and they've got to go down low, and that's where they are most effective. Again, I mentioned before we came to halftime, 14 points off of Tulsa. They have simply gone and got every loose ball they could. Right now, as a result, they lead by nine at the half. part of Tulsa and that we're not stuck on campus. I'm in all sorts of organizations and I've studied abroad twice. At TU, I'm involved in whatever I want to be. I've learned that it's okay to change paths because my life is an amazing book and I'm still writing it chapter by chapter. And that's my story so far.
This is our game, our moment, our time. We work hard and play harder. We stay loyal to the game and to our team. We are power, American power. The American, powered by determination. for a fourth straight year. Cueto from 30! Unbelievable! And be able to celebrate the second championship. There's the record breaker. They are the champions of the American. Just about ready to go for the start of the second half as the Shockers have emerged from the locker room along with their head coach, Keith Adams. She's now with Bruce. Well, Coach, in the first half, you know, you mentioned before you were concerned about the physical nature of the Tulsa team, and they got a lot of inside baskets. What's the adjustment for you? One word, rebound. Rebound. I mean, that, that whole 20 minutes, we, we were uh, pushed around, we didn't play physical, and we gave up a lot of offensive boards. Um, you know, we've got to be a, be a more physical team. Uh, you know, there's two seconds on the clock, they're shooting a free throw, and we've got inside position, but we don't make contact and give up an offensive rebound. That's unexcusable. So really the uh, the biggest adjustments, we got to play harder, we got to play with a lot more heart, and we got to rebound the ball. Everything will change about this game if we'll rebound and play harder. You were concerned about road composure for your young team. I'm not sure if that was the issue. It's just playing hard, isn't it, at this point? That's right now, just playing physical and getting after it. Uh, very uncharacteristic. Our team has been very competitive and played hard first semester. Uh, that that was, uh, I told him, that's not my team I'm watching out there. So hopefully for 20 minutes I'll see the group that I think they are and uh, we'll grow up a little bit. And um, bottom line is we've got a rebound. And you're still in the ball game. You're only down by nine. So uh, yeah, good. I mean, it, this whole thing can change if we'll rebound the basketball. All right, good luck in the All second. Right, thank half. you. Head coach Keith Adams of Wichita State. Guys. Bruce, thank you, and I know we have a lot of both Keith Adams fans as well as Shocker fans tuning in, so that means they are familiar with last year, the Go Get It Gal, and it sounded like uh, this year's team needs another visit from the Go Get It Gal, and uh, someone who resembled the head coach of the Shockers as was wearing an all-spandex bodysuit and was almost a superhero who would do just about anything to track down a basketball. Well, I think that they got introduced to the Sco Get It Girl, but they might have forgot about her. So uh, she's going to say, don't forget about me because, uh, you, you know, she's going to bring him around again. Trust me. Again, we see some of the folks who are tuning in, including Emma from Valley Center, Kansas, and some folks back in Wichita as well. Great to have everybody participating in the broadcast. Uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you throughout the evening. We'll have some more poll questions for you as well. Lincoln Rose, Angela Beck, along with Bruce Howard courtside as just about set to go. We had a chance to hear from both head coaches, and I think we were both nodding our heads as we listened to what both coaches had to say. Yeah, I agree with both coaches, uh, I, but I think with Wichita State, they have got to get more offensive production, period. I mean, they have Hampton with 12 points, Cabbage with four, and then we have Ophers, like maybe one point from someone else, so they don't have enough people contributing so people have to get the ball and go in a straight line and, and be more physical and attack the basket. So more offensive production. We've already seen 11 shockers in this game, 10 players for Tulsa as well. Just looking for some answers here in the opening game of conference play. Shockers will have the opening opportunity and well, that's not the way Keith Adams would want to start. They're gonna hang on to possession here, but again, it's Tulsa looking to strip away any ball they can. I think Wichita State just doesn't have a rhythm about them. They have a new point guard. They have a new, you know, basically everyone's pretty much new on the floor besides Cabbage. And so they just, they don't really know who to identify with and go to. And, and like Coach says, well, they're working on it. They're a work in progress, but uh, there's no excuse for giving up offensive boards. That one goes right into the lap of Alexis Galden. Shockers, we mentioned, lost eight seniors from last year's squad. Of course, uh, any team would struggle to replace Rangie Bassard and the kind of leader she was. Uh, Three-pointer off the mark from Galden. 
And just throwing up a little bit of a prayer there, hoping for help on a call, but the freshman not getting it fast and will turn it over. That's a good example of not being physical, though. She should have jumped, stopped, pump fake, got the grill on her back, and, and, and at least got to the foul line in a possession like that. Those are the little things that they're going to have to learn along the way. Maddie Biddle held her ground defensively. Biddle dribbles out of the corner. See Crystal Polk fighting for position in the paint. Uh, it'll go back over to Wichita State. Well, Hampton released and, and doubled down on that, and that's probably one of the adjustments they made at halftime because they're all sticking to their man too much. Hampton went in there and dug that one out. You see the edge for Tulsa. Aggression paying off, rebound for Polk. I mean, just not quite aggressive enough. You know, they're kind of going at him, but not really. And so that's kind of what co Coach is talking about, just being a little bit more physical, even on the offensive end. Extra pass to Biddle. And that one halfway down, but comes out. Shocker still within single digits, down by nine. Biddle hasn't hit a lot tonight, but she's scary. I think uh, she's a very good shooter. And uh, when she starts uh, shooting it well, it's, it's, it's really going to open up their attack. Jada Hampton go to the free throw line. First she has shot 80% this year. Averaging eight points, three rebounds, about a 40% shooter from the floor in her first year of college ball. She's been finding her rhythm this year. A rare miss for her. Last year was a lot easier for Cabbage because, you know, she had so many seniors around her. And now everyone's going to have to have a different identity, and she's going to have to be a double-digit scorer for them. And she's capable because um, she's capable of going inside and out. But I noticed that Coach is playing her more on the interior this year and not giving her that long-range shot that she, she did so well for them last year. That gives Hampton 13 points. She's tonight's leading scorer so far. Rebound for, again, your Belgium native, Baston. Quick stroke. And a three-pointer doesn't go for our lone representative of France. Back to Belgium. Lozada Cabbage simply from Santa Fe, New Mexico. No passport required, but there is your French freshman, Carla Bremont. Thank you very much. That's that's what we need from her. You know, she just went in, got a little dribble penetration, pull up jumper. She's a good shooter. That that's there for her. Just like that, it is a two-score ball game. Keitha Adams knew it would not take much to get back in this ball game. But they have to come up with some loose balls like that one instead. Alexis Galden gets it back and puts it up. Galden, who had been playing behind Wakefield, your point guard this year for Tulsa, and Polk all alone for the rebound. Well, Baston, she, she goes left most of the time, so, I mean, that's a good read for the, the opposing team that, you know, most of the, of the time the offense is going to start on the left side, so you, you put your strength over there. Lazada Cabbage called for the foul here as she matches up with Polk. And... May have gotten that on the wrong player. Not sure if they got the bump or the reach in, but either way, Polk is at the line. Well, we haven't heard a lot from her since early on. Um, she was on fire early and then, you know, had a little substitution. I'd like to see them really focus on getting the ball inside to her and, and making her the go-to. Cesaria Ambrosio from Switzerland comes on. We were introduced to her last year after she had transferred from Redlands Community College. Ambrosio still recovering from an injured back. Yeah, I think she's a little bit of a work in progress as far as her reps go, but she had a new career high, five steals, five assists, uh, you know, early, earlier this year. So I think she's capable of giving them a little bit of uh, firepower from the bench. You know why she's so valuable? She speaks five languages, with, <laughs> has these five international players for Wichita State. Help translate for Keith Adams when needed. That's unbelievable. Five languages. I mean, I can't imagine. I don't think that even includes emojis. 
Heath Adams, second year, the pride of Oxford, Kansas, could not turn down the chance to return to the Sunflower State after being at UTEP and having success in El Paso. Polk, 15 footer from the elbow. Well, she sized it up. She saw Cabbage wasn't going to come and get her, so she just stopped and popped. Well, Tulsa's lead had dwindled down to six. It's now a 6-0 run in response for the Golden Hurricane and a turnover by the Shockers. Well, I don't think it's because they're not trying hard. Rima, she did that little pull-up jumper but just took an extra step. That's just a freshman for you, but she looks like she's going to be a very strong player for Coach Adams in the future. Meanwhile, this is a Tulsa group that, remember, last year went just 3-13 and 13 in conference play. They did turn some heads, knocking off Houston in the first round after Houston had surprised so many teams throughout conference a year ago. And open look. Oh, it is good. Yeah. I think that's the X factor for the game right there, Golden, because... You know, just you, if you have a great point guard, you have a point guard that you can lean on. Uh, she's been with the team three years, and, and you know, she's just, she's seasoned. And That's it just helps you so much early on. An air ball winds up in the lap of Lozada Cabbage, but empty-handed are the Shockers. Three on one. Yeah. And the numbers game pays off for Tulsa. Desiree Lewis, the freshman, chimes in with a pair. Yeah, I, I'm about ready to call a timeout for her because uh, it looks like they're pretty tired here. So Shockers had clawed within six, and deficit has now exploded to a 43-26 affair. Gives us a chance, though, to check back in with Bruce. Well, our responses have been great so far in our social media questions. Uh, wonderful fans of the American Athletic Conference and women's basketball. Here's our next question now, and obviously on Facebook, uh, on the answer line, go ahead and answer this question. And the question is, both head coaches have tallied uh, wins, a lot of wins in their career. Which head coach has eclipsed the 300 mark? Which head coach between these two has eclipsed the 300 mark in college women's basketball? So Tulsa, obviously, uh, and again, do that on the comment line in Facebook as uh, we continue engage, to engage with our fans on social media. But obviously, guys, uh, University of Tulsa got hot from the outside, extended their lead. I think Wichita State's playing harder and tougher inside, but now Tulsa's outside game has extended their lead to this point. Bruce, thank you very much. And again, a reminder of Bruce's question for you. You see your two options. You have a 50-50 chance of getting this poll question right. Either Keith Adams or Matilda Mossman recently this year eclipsed the 300 win tally. Both of them have had great careers. Uh, take a look again, uh, Angela. One of the storylines so far, turnovers. Well, turnovers are, unfortunately, there's been a lot of unforced turnovers. Uh, mostly on the Wichita State side. Just it's because they're so young, there's a little high-low action that they turned over. This one, she just kind of tangled up her feet, but they'll get better. Uh, it's just it's just uh, not what you want to see if you're a coach. You know, you know they're trying hard, but trying hard doesn't always make it. Wichita State trying to overcome 12 turnovers, and again, they've been held scoreless for the past two and a half minutes now, while Tulsa has made their last Four shots on an 11-0 run for the past couple of minutes. As a result, 43-26, the discrepancy on our board. You talk about discrepancy, you wouldn't know it by simply tuning in tonight, but the all-time series between these two programs, Wichita State of 18 games, has won 16 of them. Now, with that said, last year's two meetings in conference was the first time in almost two decades that these two teams had met after several contests back in the 80s and the 90s. Yeah, it makes me wonder, why don't you play a team for 17 years? That's so close. That, that, you live that close, but, and there must be something going on, you know? There must be a reason there was a coach there that did stop playing each other or whatever, but I'm glad to see, obviously, that that stopped, but I don't think it's any indication of who's better than the other right now, obviously. It was a 17-year hiatus, officially. Uh, before they met in conference play last year. Of course, last year was the first year in conference for Wichita State, coinciding with the first year head coach, Keitha Adams. Elliott's come off the bench and, and done a lot of good things for them. Uh, you know, junior, she's got a lot of uh, experience and, and she has a lot of confidence in herself. 
And it doesn't get much better than that. We talked about when they pulled Polk out of the game, the problem was there much, wasn't much drop off. Kendry and Elliott has played well off the bench now with eight points of her own. Well, I see a little more speed in what Tulsa is delivering than what they've done in the past. But I also see um, the passing's a lot better. Their high-low passing is on target. You can tell they've worked that drill several times, so it's, it, it is impressive to watch. So an official timeout. Tulsa right now, 45 to 28. Golden Hurricane looking for win number one of the brand new conference season here in the American. Strong in mind, strong in body, strong in school, sport, life. The grind is 10% physical and 90% mental. The mind is the power. The body is the means to jump higher, run faster, be smarter, and live longer. There is no weakness when it comes to seeking help. We are stronger together. So let's talk about it. A waterfall starts with one drop. Change starts with one person. The American is dedicated to ending the stigma related to mental health and promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. Promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. This is our game, our moment, our time. We work hard and play harder. We stay loyal to the game and to our team. We are power, American power. The American, powered by determination. Tulsa right now leading 45-28. Moments ago, uh, Bruce Howard asked you a question and no need to raise your hand when he asks you a question. Just go ahead and uh, leave your answer in the comment section. And this time we gave you the poll to cast your vote in. but. One of these two coaches recently eclipsed the 300 win total, both of them with great careers as Keitha Adams now sitting on 305 victories. Her second win this year gave her 300. That came against Missouri State back on November 10th. Uh, Matilda Mossman right now, 245 wins. Again, seven years combined between Arkansas and K-State, but then dipped down into the high school ranks in Oklahoma. But great to have her back in Tulsa now for close to a decade these past eight years. Their programs are in just a little bit of difference as far as uh, where they're at in the building process. You know, Keitha Adams has it right in front of her. I mean, uh, it's, it's a work in progress. She has 10 new players, eight new freshmen. Uh, it's it's going to take her a while, but I have every uh, belief in the world that she's going to make it happen. She's a very tough coach. And Matilda, you know, she's had to come in here and uh, regroom re her team a little bit. And they did not have a great year last year, and you can kind of feel a little pressure from that. And I'm impressed with the people that she's added to it and uh, the way that they're playing. Elliott again coming off the bench. She has 10 points, looking for number 11. Well, she kept the ball up, and uh, she kept fighting. And uh, I, I do see a different attitude in her. Here she is clearing the space, putting it in her left hand and delivering. She had the entire team photo of the Shockers right there around her posing. And a three-point play is good. She's now your second leading scorer tonight is Elliott behind Polk, who has 14. Well, I have to say I'm happy for Coach Mossman uh, in this first victory. Victories are hard to come by if, if, if this happens. we still got another quarter. But, I mean, if they keep playing like this, uh, this is good for her because, you know, they worked hard to get here. Well, turnaround just will not go down for Faye. I think the big part right now is Wichita just has to get more kids confident in their scoring opportunities and being more aggressive. They're, they're just they're, they're uh, just a little bit soft in the kind of approach that they're taking to their offense. Again, neither team has shot particularly well from beyond the arc. Tulsa is just 2 of 14, but they have not needed the long-range shot. Let's check back in courtside with Bruce. 
Yeah, in the last couple of timeouts, head coach Matilda Mossman of the Golden Hurricane started to talk to her team about handling pressure because with the score the way it is, she really fully expected Wichita State to start bringing the pressure. You know, talking about things like ball fakes and uh, shot fakes and pass fakes and that sort of thing in order to alleviate the pressure. And boom, right on, right on cue, Wichita State slapped on that three-quarter court trap that last possession, and Tulsa was able to solve it. Tulsa looking for another answer. That one won't go for Elliott. Well, that time it looked like Wichita State played a little bit harder. We're going back to how you play and how hard you're playing. I think they can be playing harder than what they are. And that was a better, better example of it. Again, first of 15 games on the American Digital Network this year for women's basketball. Tulsa and Wichita State making their introductions to those of you tuning in perhaps for the first time to see one or both of these teams. Obviously introductions has been the story this year for Wichita State. Keith Adams had eight seniors last year. Of course that means a lot of recruiting to be done winds up with all the newcomers this year. We mentioned all the international flavor. She had a couple of birthdays the other day and that means when you hear happy birthday being sung to you. You hear it in five different languages or more. I, I'd hear it in any language I could have it as long as I get my cake. I was going to say, I think, though, there's still just one cake. Okay. I think cake is a universal language as the foul before the shot. Well, Brewers, Brewers come off the bench and taking it to the hole the last two series down, and she's shown the aggressiveness that I've been talking about. So that's a good, good spark to their offense right now. Biddle will get a breather. Maddie with four points so far here tonight. Both teams a bit of a drought at the moment. Wichita State just two of their last ten from the floor while Tulsa has gone a little over two minutes without being able to grow the lead. And another ball that winds up with Elliott. Yeah, that's just silly right there. That They can't afford to have that. That was, that was a little walk that the officials missed. Tulsa taking their time, a minute and a half to go here in the third quarter, a quarter in which they've been able to grow what was a single-digit advantage at the half. Now to a 17-point lead. Great cut to the rim, couldn't finish, but free throws coming up again for Kendrian Elliott. She gives them depth behind Paul. Can you just wonder what perhaps they could do on the court at the same time? Well, that's a nice, nice uh, cut to the basket. She keeps it up, tries to finish it, gets fouled by Brewer. But if you notice a little bit, Wichita State standing and watching it, while uh, I think that experience, you know, teaches you how to cut. And a lot of times this freshman, you just don't know how to move without that basketball, and, and that's what they're doing a little better. Tilda Mossman's gotten scoring from just five different players, but they've all been significant. So I've talked about would they ever pull, play Polk and Elliott at the same time, and they're both on the floor, so we'll see what this looks like. They may be battling each other for rebounds. Yeah, right now, Wichita State doesn't really have an answer for their inside game, and they don't really have an inside game. So they're going to have to get one developed here with these young players and get someone to emerge. Just Elliott's third game this year. Now eight for eight from the charity stripe. Like I said, I think she wants Cabbage to be in there, but Cabbage doesn't really want to be inside. I think she likes to be outside more, and that's kind of tough. Got the defender off her feet and still able to get that defensive call. A heads up play from Ashley Reed. Okay, but that's what happens when you attack the basket. It wasn't pretty, but she went ahead and went in a straight line, gave a little fake, and drew the foul. And that's what they have to do. They got to get physical, and that's what coach has been asking for. Alexis Galden almost got away with it. Yeah. Golden on the other end. She returns the favor to Ashley Reed. 
Baldwin's not known what to do, when to do, and whenever, whenever, whatever they need, she does it. And that was a good read for her. No one was on the backside, and she just took it to the hole. Again, you're excited about what is to come with Keith Adams at the helm at Wichita State, but uh, this will be a tough process here in year two, reinventing the roster. Yeah, and she's grabbed a couple JUCO players, too, that should help her, but it's still, you know, it's an adjustment to get a junior college player to, to understand the team concept sometimes because, you know, they're able to do a lot of things in JUCO differently. Doesn't matter if you're JUCO or D1, you take steps, it's a travel, as Brewer will cough that one up. But Tulsa has been able to enjoy a lead for just about the entirety of this one. They trailed 3-0 early, would go on a 13-0 run, and have not looked back. Able to grow the lead in that third quarter. With a 19-10 performance in that third frame. Unable to deny Elliott. Still 10 to shoot. And the Shockers with Brewer hauling that one in. I like the way Brewer looks. I think she's going to be a nice player for them. Uh, she's just a freshman, and she's coming and give, give them a lot of good minutes. Shot clock turned off for the end of the third quarter. And do we have a walk or a foul? They say a travel. It's going to be the third straight period that Tulsa has the final look. I like that move, though. That was a little step-through move that, you know, some coach, some uh, officials give you and some people officials don't, but it is a, a real move, and it's unfortunate that she she didn't make it anyway, but... And two of the th first three quarters, Tulsa squeezes one in before the buzzer. Golden adds her numbers tonight with three more. So 14 points for Alexis Golden. That stretches the lead to 21. Three quarters in the books. One quarter left here. Golden Hurricanes in the driver's seat. So Tulsa able to sit back, enjoy a breather. Let's check back in with Bruce Howard, courtside. Well, Wichita State head coach Keith Adams has been really pleased with her team's chemistry. Remember, this is a young team, so for this team to have this good chemistry early is maybe a little bit unusual, but she's very happy with that. And remember, there's the language barrier with a player from Poland, player from Switzerland, from France, and also Belgium. So there's that to get through, but this team really likes each other. And as Lincoln alluded to earlier, there was a, a birthday for a couple of the players on Thursday, and they sang happy birthday five times in five different languages. So there's no question this team really likes each other. And, you know, this is the time during the holiday season where you can bond a little bit. You know, there's no classes out there, and you really have a chance to bond. And one of the things that Wichita State did to bond is they played a game called Speak Out. Now, this is a, a, a card game where you actually put a, an oral appliance in your mouth and then you try to enunciate things and your uh, teammates try to guess what you're trying to say. And if you can get a close-up, Iggy, of those two people, the oral appliance is in there. And, uh, well, obviously, hilarity ensued. And it was a game <laughs> they really enjoyed playing. I have a hard enough time enunciating with nothing in my mouth. But I would say to you guys, uh, Lincoln and Angela, I would, I would charge you to try to do an entire broadcast with that oral appliance next time out. What do you think? Yeah, Bruce, we certainly thought about it. Imagine this, not only do you have players with so many different native tongues, but then all of a sudden you have a contraption that is hindering those native tongues along the way. But uh, Keitha Adams always figures out new ways to, to kind of reinvent the wheel when it comes to coaching. But I, I will say this, I like her big picture look at you talk about the educational experience. You talk about these young players being surrounded by players with so many different backgrounds and experiences from all over the globe. Well, it's called learning mode, and she's teaching them how to have fun, and she's teaching them how to like each other and learn the process, and everything's a teaching moment. And as long as they take this night and learn from it, midseason they're going to be where they need to be. So. This is a this is a wake up kind of for them because it's the first time that they've had to face you know another American Athletic Conference team 
and uh, they've been at home a lot, so now they're on the road and it's tougher. You mentioned they've been at home so much. One way that teams gel for the first time is on road trips. When you're on buses, on flights, in airports, and you're spending a lot of time in hotels together. But this is only the second true road game for Wichita State so far this year. Yeah, the other road game was at South Dakota State, and that's no fun place to be. I mean, South Dakota State packs it in there, so uh, I'm sure they had uh, a great experience over there. They did not win that game, but uh, it's a very good team. Again, those of you tuning in here on the American Digital Network, interactive this season, including the current question being asked to you, how many freshmen are on the Shocker roster? That includes true freshmen and redshirt freshmen. Keep that in mind when you cast your vote. Polk is back in the ball game. Her presence being felt. Already a minute off the clock here in the fourth quarter and already back to the free throw line will be Ashley Reed. So we mentioned Wichita State replaced eight seniors. You see the multiple choice there. So you have a feeling you have probably eliminated a couple of your potential answers. Yeah, I think they've got to get they've got to get some quick points and they've got to be be really fast here about it and and try to maybe get some isolations for Hampton and at the three point line, a little pick and roll or something to free her up. I will ask an impromptu question here. Remind me, Ashley Reed has this side dribble and I'm drawing a blank on who that reminds me of, but it's a very distinct approach at the free throw line. Can't remember if it's in the NBA, WNBA or simply college level that I saw it. Hmm. It's going to be bugging me for a while. Hopefully hopefully one of our viewers uh, recognizes it. We've got him a few more times, so I hope you get that before the end of the year. Driving, and that one rejected by Hampton. Other way, stutter step around the defender in the finish with the right hand of Ashley Reed. Well, I like Ashley Reed. Ashley Reed, uh, you know, she's, she's a little more aggressive. She takes it down the straight line. And uh, they need a little more of that. I think right now, Coach Adams is trying to find somebody that's willing to attack. As they hold their ground against Polk, but it winds back up with Tulsa. Shot clock winding down. Last shot did not hit the rim. And back up the court with Reed. Well, Ashley Reed all by herself among the trees and again finds a way to get that ball up to the rim. Well, that's what these games are for is to figure out, you know, where, you know, different people are going to answer for you. And that's that's two times in a row for Reed. Seven points now for Reed. So with her four rebounds, we saw her take a charge early in this game. You have to be pleased with what you're seeing from her now. And she's a junior, came over from New Mexico Junior College after, I noted, growing up in northern Texas at Wichita Falls, Texas, near the Texas-Oklahoma border. Tulsa's missed their last four shots from the floor. A little two-minute scoring drought right now. Got an 18-point lead. This is one you want to work on your sets and work on, you know, some plays that you need to put in. And well, Mossman wants to talk things over. If Tulsa can pick up the win tonight, uh, what does Coach Mossman focus on uh, going into the next game? I'll pose that question to you when we come back on the other side of this break. Seven and a half to go. Her Tulsa squad looking to start off 1-0 in the American. part of Tulsa and that we're not stuck on campus. I'm in all sorts of organizations and I've studied abroad twice. At TU, I'm involved in whatever I want to be. 
I've learned that it's okay to change paths because my life is an amazing book and I'm still writing it chapter by chapter. And that's my story so far. Alexis Golden right now, second leading scorer for Toll tonight, 14 points. Nine of those 14 have come from beyond the arc. She has the only three triples this evening for the Golden Hurricane. They haven't needed much from downtown, but what they have needed, she's provided. Probably if I'm, I'm uh, you know, coach, I'm going to give the ball to, to Golden and tell her she's my MVP tonight and really build off the fact that she ran the show and she really was the catalyst to make these guys deliver at the level that they did and their bigs inside were great and I love the two freshmen that they've inserted so I think they're going to have a lot of confidence they've got Memphis Knicks at home and uh, Memphis has you know struggled a little bit in the preseason but they've always known to be to be a hard-nosed team so just take it one game at a time and be really happy with tonight. So again gold in a busy night we mentioned 14 points four rebounds five assists through 30 minutes of play. Now, if I got an MVP, I also got an MVP P or something like that. I don't know how you say it, but Polk, I love Polk. She's really she's your most valuable Polk player. She, yeah, she's my P, Polk player. Yeah, but no, I, I just think she's really improved in this. I, I, she's looking like she's just in great shape and uh, she's playing a lot better than I've ever seen her play. They get the shot off in time. Wichita State with the rebound. Wichita State with nine freshmen this year, eight true freshmen and one red shirt to answer our most recent question posed to you on Facebook. Shockers, seven minutes to a race, an 18 point deficit. And another turnover won't help. Yeah, look, there's just a lack of continuity. I think everyone has the will to want to win for Coach Adams, but they don't have any offensive continuity. And it comes from your leadership, and they're just, you know, really young at that. So that's what they need to work on when they go back home. And you and I were talking this week to Coach Mossman. Again, she pointed out this roster, every one of them is on the same page. They're predictable in the good sense that you know they're fighters. They will give you everything they have. Biddle off the mark, but guess what? It's another rebound for Polk, your MPP, or whatever whatever you got. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, feel, I, I, didn't want, I want to give a shout-out to her, though, because, you know, you and I have been sitting here for a few years together, and it's just good to see the big girls get the touches that they got, and uh, the improved passing I've seen out of Tulsa has just been really good. Coach Mossman still... She's still animated. Neither coach probably has sat down all game. So that's what you like to see, the intensity on the sideline. And it's early, but everybody's giving it their all. Talking to Nikesha Thompson there, one of our three officials in this ball game. Some familiar faces in tonight's crew. Every Wichita State player likes to put a couple dribbles down, and that's what they're going to have to eliminate. That's a good post move, though, inside. Yeah, successful possession with Shia Smith. Another freshman. Yeah, when in doubt, if we don't mention what class they are, you can assume they were at their high school prom last year. Yeah. And a held ball. Keith Adams appreciating the effort. Well, still 5.35 to go. A lot of time. That's that's the kind of energy that I kind of expected early on. I, I haven't really seen it this game, not not to the level that I think they're capable of. So, you know, when you're young, if you just play hard, good things happen, kind of like Coach Adams talked about. And uh, now they're starting to play hard. See if they can trim more off this deficit. And simply holding her ground there, Elliot, not leaving her feet. Well, we mentioned what's coming up for Tulsa. Meanwhile, for Wichita State, they'll stay on the road. They'll head a little bit farther from home over there to Greenville, North Carolina, to take on the Pirates on Wednesday. And they'll welcome Memphis to town. Of course, we'll see them in Dallas at SMU on the 15th mid-month. Coach Adams talked about one game at a time and not looking ahead. 
and uh, I'm sure they haven't looked ahead of that. Tulsa just got three shots off on that possession, and it's Elliott who is able to come through. I think Elliott can start for a lot of teams, and she knows she can, and she has it in her, so what she's capable of is she's showing tonight. And a foul will be whistled on Baston. Elliott tonight, 15 points off the bench on five of six shooting. She and Polk now combining for 31 points there in the low post. As well as Polk has a double-double with 10 rebounds to go with her 16 points. So I think Matilda Moffin has to be pleased with what has transpired around the post. Let's talk about Lewis, too. Lewis is a freshman at the line, and she's just been super consistent all night. She's, she plays with a lot of energy. Um, you know, Coach Mossman talks about trying to recruit motor. Do they have motor? And uh, I think she's one of those motor players. Mentioned that she was a leader by example, would lead with effort on this team. And that lead back to 19. Wichita State started to shave away at that deficit in the second quarter before Tulsa blew it open with a 22 to 10 frame. A low scoring fourth quarter. Not a lot of player movement. Ball moves a little bit, but they got to get a little bit more player movement like that. Down Everything the but the score from Baston. Oh. Yep, she, she's given a lot of effort, but it just hasn't fallen for her. Final four minutes of regulation. And I don't know if Elliot was tripped, but she at least did a good job of selling the fact that she was. I think she was in shock. Uh, she was so open down there. She was in a one-on-one -on -one isolation, and I think she tripped over her own feet, actually. This means more time that can come off the clock here. They go back inside to Elliott with the fresh shot clock. They just continue to get Elliott the basketball. And I don't think she's expecting him to do so. Yeah, but Golden, my MVP, I told you. She, she just, she made that happen, all her. That was like some of Manu Ginobili's early teammates who next thing they knew, they had the ball at the rim, had no idea how it got there. I don't know if I told you I was a point guard when I played. So that's why, you know, I like these point guards that play well. Well, our final question that Bruce is going to ask uh, is going to be probably one of the uh, questions where there's no true uh, right or wrong answer, but we would love to get the input from our viewers. Uh, let's check in with Bruce. We'll have a chance to catch up with him in just a little bit. And again, Ashley Reed looking for a strong finish. She's got nine points now, make it 10. Comes the second shocker to hit from beyond the arc. And turnover moments later from Galden. There we go. And a nice little run here for the Shockers, Baston. Well, you knew they weren't going to quit. That's not, that's not in a Coach Adams team. Two and a half to go here in the fourth. Tulsa has not trailed since the opening moments of this one. This is our game, our moment, our time. We work hard and play harder. We stay loyal to the game and to our team. We are power, American power. The American, powered by determination.
Mooney scores. Three strikeouts in a row. Dominance for a fourth straight year. Quaso from 30. Unbelievable. And be able to celebrate the seventh championship. There's the record breaker. They are the champions of the American. Back underway. A couple of minutes to go here in the fourth. One of the keys we talked about tonight was for Tulsa to get balanced scoring, and they have four kids right now in double figures, so they answered the call. Again, both these teams uh, riding the momentum of a victory in their final non-conference game for Wichita State. That was against Savannah State, while Tulsa knocked off UTEP. Of course, UTEP, the last stopping ground of Keitha Adams. So when Keitha saw that game tape of Tulsa's last game, probably recognized a few people that they were matched up against. Well, she had a lot of love for UTEP, what, eight, 18 seasons there? And uh, yeah, th there was only one dream job like you talked about earlier, and it was the Wichita State job. So she did a tremendous job there, and she will do a tremendous job here. About as close as she can get to home in Oxford, Kansas, at a Division I program, I think just a half hour away. She landed a couple of good Texas recruits. So, you know, in the preseason, so it helps to kind of go back to what, what's fed you. Both these teams, when they play squads like SMU and Houston, will take advantage of those opportunities to go into some pretty fertile hotbeds of recruiting. Two minutes remaining here in this fourth as Polk tonight with 16 points, 10 rebounds. A double-double to lead the way, and... Yeah, it seems like they're a lot more aggressive now, Wichita State, and maybe what they can learn from this is they need to bring this earlier. They bring that kind of energy early, good things happen, but yeah, they were a little flat on their feet, and uh, I think, you know, emotionally probably a little spent, it's, it's an emotional deal, you know, going on a road trip, your first time, and all the things that you have to do. We would love to get everybody's input on who's the most deserving of the post-game interview. We'll talk to the winning coach and uh, key player. Driving into some traffic, won't go. In uh, that's your story of the night right there. You had at least three shockers all around the rim, and it's Desiree Lewis all by her lonesome, a freshman who just wanted it more. Yeah, she's been a big deal all night. She's uh, She's been consistent. She's been really physically tough beyond her year. The sky, she's mindful of the clock. Well, it appears as though Tulsa, for just the third time in program history, will knock off Wichita State, although, of course, it'll be their second win against the Shockers in the last two years. After that 17-year hiatus between these two teams. Well, considering preseason, they were ranked 12th in the big, uh, in the AC, uh, athletic, American Athletic Conference. Uh, this has got to feel good because uh, they didn't pick them any higher than that. This was a game that both these teams felt like was winnable for them. Tulsa came out again that 13-0 run in the opening quarter, a strong third quarter as well. And Matilda Mossman doesn't have 300 wins just yet, but this will get her a little bit closer. Tulsa wins their conference opener. 1-0 will find themselves at the top of the standings tied for first place. They go to bed tonight. Well, a little sigh of relief for Matilda Mossman, but uh, a victory well earned. Her team did a lot of great things in that game and stuck with the game plan and made it happen and had several players in double figures and executed well. So again, you see the final numbers in this one. Yeah, for Wichita State, I just, I, I think, you know, just they didn't really come out with the intensity that they had. They had a few too many turnovers. 19 turnovers in this league is not gonna make it. Just didn't have enough balanced scoring for themselves. But 
it's a good way to take a look at what you've done and, and learn from it, and that's just what they've got to do. I think they had some good minutes from some great people. Uh, I really liked uh, Ashley Reed. I thought she came off the bench and gave them some good minutes. And um, obviously Hampton was their, their MVP. Yeah, Hampton had 18 points in the loss. A couple of double doubles for Tulsa. Let's check in first. No surprise here, the interview with the winning head coach, Matilda coach Mossman. Mossman. what kind of a complete effort was this for your team? Yeah, from, from the start to finish, I, I thought we competed, thought we played hard, you know, made some bad decisions during the fourth quarter, but for overall, I'm pretty happy. Your team really crashed the boards, especially on the offensive side. What was the key to that? Well, I, I think it was a buy-in. You know, we, we, we had not been a very good rebounding team, and we talked about this game. We were going to have to grind it out. We were going to have to box out because they're a physical team. And uh, fortunately, our, our kids did a great job. Defensively, you did a nice job of cutting down their lanes going to the basket. Yeah, I, I thought uh, defensively we did what we wanted to do against them. Uh, we really didn't let anybody get hot and get going. So, uh, you know, I, I thought defensively set the tone for the game. In a moment, we're going to talk to Crystal Paul. However, you had some others emerge. I mean, obviously, Kendra and Elliott came to play tonight, didn't you? How nice is it when you take your leading scorer off the floor and her replacement can go can go get double digits any night? How do, what does it mean to get a win to start the uh, league season? I, I think it's huge. You know, when we're, uh, you know, it's a long way through these next 15 games and, and you, you're jockeying for position every night. And so it's huge to win the first game at home. Coach, congratulations. Great job. Thank you. Head coach Matilda Mossman of the Golden Hurricane. And let's welcome in Crystal Polk with 16 points and 11 rebounds in the ball game. Uh, what was so important early in the game when your team started to dominate inside? Um, we noticed that um, that they couldn't really guard our post players, so we just knew that we needed to keep getting it inside and keep going in hard in the paint. And you use the lob a lot. You use position, yes. and then, but you've got to have a good pass from your guards. Guards did a nice job, didn't they? Oh, yes, definitely. We've been working on that for the last few practices, getting it in inside and doing high lows and making sure that we get the right angle and stuff and passes. And we executed tonight, and that's what we needed to do. Crystal, in the offseason, you recommitted yourself to being in the best shape of your life to play your senior season. What did you do? Oh, uh, during the summertime, I just really buckled down on what, I'm, what I was eating right and making sure that I was getting in the gym as much as I could between uh, classes and stuff. But, yeah, it really paid off in the end. And Kendra Ann Elliott came in and really gave you a, a terrific breather and was very productive as well. How important was that? Uh, it was very important for just uh, having scoring on uh, – on uh, when she's not on the court and when we're on, uh, I'm on the court, but uh, it was really good having her back and out uh, executing. Yeah, and, and winning at home in the league is important, isn't it? Very important, yes. All right, congratulations, great job. Thank you. Crystal Polk, who is our player of the game, as Tulsa defeats Wichita State here in Tulsa. And yeah, Bruce, thank you very much. Crystal with one of two double doubles tonight. Desiree Lewis with one as well. Four Golden Hurricane in double digit scoring. And it was her understudy with the team high. Kendra Adelight with 17 off the bench. For Angela Beck and our entire American Digital Network crew, I'm Lincoln Rose. Tulsa now 1-0 and in conference play with a 14 point victory at home. Next time you'll hear from us here on ADN. This upcoming Wednesday, the Texas Tussle, SMU, and Houston, our next broadcast here on the American Digital Network. So long from Tulsa.